What's that? You want thicker fog, you say? Glycerin. Don't change your content by more than 10%. So do not add more than 10% more glycerin than there already is. It's not necessary. You might damage your fog machine. Shake it, boom, done. Thick fog. Thick, thick fog. We're at the five hour mark here. We ran the fog machine for another hour and then had to let the place air it out for a good half hour so we can see what the heck is going on here. So our ice temperature is starting to get down to those, uh, those more normal ice temperatures. It's getting its melt on. And we're gonna throw some salt into the supercharger here. Normal ice. Ice you just poured salt onto. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a miracle, I tell you, it's a miracle. Then here we are making up some of our special calcium chloride batch. Just using the coffee grinder, as you can see. Just takes a couple seconds. Boom. I usually use about this little container full per full bin of ice. Usually, give or take. So to explain what's actually going on here, this is a chemical reaction between the ice water molecules and the calcium chloride mixture. Um, you can see how it just eats away at the ice and what it's doing is this is dropping the melting temperature of ice and if you know anything about ice you know that melting ice is actually cooler than ice similar effect to how boiling water or the steam from boiling water is hotter than boiling water Get a look at that, the bottom of this bin right now. You see that? You know how cold things need to be and take into consideration that this is not a cooler unit, which is not necessary by the way. This is a tote unit, but a very, very thick one. Alright, so some of the tricks of the trade here. Simple thermodynamics, guys. Firstly, we got an average temperature here in the kitchen of about 18C. What are we getting out of this freezer here? Oh, geez. Well, the point of this all is that the average freezer only goes to about minus 15. I live in Canada. It's not super, super cold outside today, but it's really cold. Forecast says it's about minus 17, but it feels like about minus 23 with the wind chill today. Here's our ice. Rule number one to your fog chiller. Always have your fog machine and fog chiller as low to the ground as possible. I know we've got it a foot and a half here up on the table just for doing our tests and demonstrations, but simply put, the reason being is that 
the temperature at ground level is still going to be colder than the temperature even a foot or two upwards. So you're already running your fog chiller at a disadvantage if you have it up off of the ground. Keep it as low to the ground as possible. Rule number two, the gapping between the fogger and the fog chiller. The ideal gap seems to be about two inches depending on your design or whatever fog chiller you're using. You have to tweak that one out yourself but you do need that gap for your fog to perform the way that it's supposed to. Rule number three, do not use any kind of PVC or plastic or insulating material on the inside of your fog chiller. You wanna use some steel or copper pipe or preferably aluminum and the reason being is that though that PVC and the, that plastic stuff on the inside of here is actually insulating your fog away from the temperatures that we want to be achieving. So I don't know why I've seen some of you guys trying that out, but it's a terrible idea. You want preferably aluminum. Rule number four, the amount of piping and airflow that you have. You want an ideal mixture of airflow in there where the the fog coming on the input is getting a chance to chill the way that you want it to and so our task is to get the absolute coldest amount of air to come out of that output and we want the fog to have retained those ultimate low temperatures so you got to make sure that you have pretty much the perfect amount of airflow you don't want too much you don't want too little you want it as cold as possible. Rule number five, when choosing a bin, do not use steel or aluminum or something that's not insulated. When I chose this uh, plastic tote design, the thickness was fairly good. Now it's not like a cooler. I've seen guys making these things out of coolers. And although that's gonna work good, it seems to be a little bit overkill and coolers are just way more expensive. Now these plastic totes that I found here, they're quite thick. They can handle the cold temperatures. I don't know how it would handle the cold temperature if some drunk guy kicked it when it's minus 50 or something, but we'll, we'll find that one out eventually, I'm sure. We'll have to do the drunk guy kick test. Guys, quick note. We've learned that at these temperatures and all the other dynamics involved, once you go live with your, your Bose-Einstein Fogginator fog machine, whatever the hell we're calling it nowadays. Once you go live with this thing and you get into those minus 30 temperatures and beyond, keep your fog machine live. What I mean is don't turn, don't turn off your fog machine. You got to keep it heated up because we're achieving temperatures so low here that even with our gap back there, our ideal gap that we always want to have, this unit is pretty much clogging up the end of the fog machine or freezing it up so to speak just because it does when you get to these temperatures okay just a big heads up we we've proven this fact a couple of times we weren't sure the first time or two but now that is also confirmed keep that fog machine hot i gotta say that plastic grate that we chose here that uh dryer vent output I can't even remember what its minus rating was, but it has been clutch as far as withstanding those temperatures and then uh, distributing the fog the way that we want it to. I've seen some guys doing the garbage bag trick. I've seen other guys using the pipe with the holes in it, but I mean for a standalone unit without all the extra crap sticking around and looking all shitty, this hands down is the best design, boys and girls.
Supercharger, carburetor, carbonator, who gives a shit?